Hello, my name is Kyra Dingle, and I'm a second year medical student at the University of California School of Medicine. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I'm a 12th grader and one of the high school researchers in this project. So our project is titled Adolescent Ear Care Mentorship, a YPAR approach to improving group chat etiquette. Digital technologies are an integral part of youth lives. Almost all youth 13 to 17 years old own a smartphone and more children own their own smartphones now than ever before. Adolescents often use app-based forms of digital communication, such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. The benefits of such apps include facilitating social communications, staying in touch with others, fostering a sense of belonging, and preventing FOMO, or fear of missing out. Despite these benefits, problems also arise when using these forms of digital communication, such as interpersonal drama and cyberbullying. Conflict and cyberbullying are more problematic when they occur in these digital group settings, such as on group chats or even on social media. Communication through text in these settings allow bullies to act at any time without seeing the recipient's live reactions, which make it easier to cause harm online and to do so frequently. A solution to these issues has been digital citizenship education in schools, which focuses on the ethical, safe, and responsible use of internet technologies. However, digital citizenship programming is largely adult designed, focusing on global topics such as plagiarism, misinformation, and cyberbullying. Notably, students are rarely included in the creation and the distribution of this content, even though it is a promising way to promote digital citizenship and civic participation. Emphasis is also usually on behaviors to avoid rather than development of online social skills. However, youth involvement in digital citizenship education may be more effective than adult-driven programs. Research has shown that middle school students are more comfortable talking to their near peers than adults about issues because youth often just understand their experiences better. Such findings suggest the potential benefits of incorporating a near peer mentorship model in digital citizenship education. By centering youth perspectives and encouraging youth to share their knowledge, near peer mentoring may provide more salient and timely guidance for online behavior. So our research utilized youth action participatory research methods to help older teens in high school develop programming and teach younger teens about positive digital communication. So YPAR is an action-oriented approach it cultivates younger generation skills to not only recognize problems, but become problem solvers themselves. YPAR creates a space for a stronger community of youth and more active change with topics that are most important to younger people. Our research team involves a medical student, a PhD student, a professor, a high school teacher, and 15 10th through 12th graders like me who met during regular class time two to three times a week for three weeks. This partnership began when a professor at UCI was approached by a K-12 private school about conflicts arising from group chats among middle schoolers. She offered to conduct a YPAR project with the high school social psychology course to both help them learn about research and assist with digital citizenship learning in the middle school. So we have three main research questions. The first question, what concerns and issues do youth identify with digital group communication? And a sub-question, what strategies do they recommend for reducing miscommunication and conflict? Question two, can a wide part developed and, developed and delivered intervention improve eighth graders' knowledge of healthy digital communication? And three, could engagement in wide part improve high school students' knowledge of research methods, critical thinking of their own digital communication, and perceptions of themselves as change agents or resources for others at their school? Before we all met together, the UCR team comprised of the medical student, PhD student, and professor gave us an online pre-test survey about our group chat experience and our social media and texting behaviors. In our first meeting, we had discussions together to define group chats and identify their benefits as well as their issues. Afterwards, we opted to interview other youth around our age about group chats and reported their findings to the class in order to identify possible patterns or themes. Key strategies were then generated for younger students to help prevent, identify, and use when problems occur in group chats. Drawing on a logic model of features, mechanisms, and processes, we all split into groups and chose our desired topic to research and teach to the younger students. 
In total, we came up with five lessons. Tone, cyberbullying, miscommunication, group polarization, and power dynamics within group chats. We utilized PowerPoint presentations, games, and skits to engage younger students. Each group presented to the team, received feedback, and modified their lesson. I partnered with another student in my class and created a lesson on group polarization. We focused on teaching the eighth grade students how to identify when group polarization and ganging up occur within group chats. We also taught them strategies to resolve these conflicts, such as being an upstander or standing up for your friends. The high school researchers drafted pre-post knowledge questions based on the content that they provided in their five lessons. These questions were then adapted to a pre-test survey that the eighth graders completed prior to watching the lessons. And over the course of two days, the high school students taught their lessons to different eighth grade science classes. At the end, both the eighth grade students and the high schooler researchers completed a post-test survey. And all surveys included open-ended and close-ended questions. So when answering our first question, what concerns and issues do youth identify with digital group communication? Uh, we first noticed a lot of benefits that were identified, which included connecting with friends and family, open and readily available communication, and is an easily accessible help or support. However, there were several concerns that were raised by the high school students. They identified five main problems in group chats, miscommunication from ambiguous tone or phrasing, drama, exclusion versus inclusion, sharing private content, and ganging up or group polarization. These problems were reiterated by the eighth graders in pre-test surveys. At least 83% reported at least one issue around miscommunication, drama, or bullying. Miscommunication was reported most commonly. Other relevant demographic information learned from the pre-test included the majority of students owned a cell phone, they were part of a group chat, and they had experienced some form of drama in digital communications. Specific strategies to reduce miscommunication arose from the high school students' interview studies and were incorporated into their lesson plans. So strategies include verifying information when making plans, prefacing messages to provide context, being specific when it comes to phrasing, adding emojis, and using appropriate punctuation. The importance of immediately asking for clarification when uncertain for tone, the benefit of one-to-one -one communication, and even de-escalation strategies were also identified. When answering our second question, how can a YPAR developed and delivered intervention improve eighth graders' knowledge of healthy digital communication? We found significant increases in knowledge scores between pre and post test surveys. After peer teaching, 86% of students identified miscommunication as a key component of problems in group chats, which was an increase from 60% in the pre test. Almost all eighth grade students were also able to generate at least two strategies for preventing or reducing miscommunication. The most reported strategy to reduce miscommunication included the use of tone indicators, emojis, GIFs, and appropriate punctuation to convey a clear tone when messaging. This finding was further supported by increases in the selection of these behaviors when asked how to effectively communicate tone. This figure here demonstrates these increases. The green bars demonstrate the percentage of eighth grade students that had selected that particular strategy as a way to effectively communicate tone during the pretest. The dark blue represents those that selected the strategy in the post test. This figure also shows increases in selection of strategies to address conflict in a group chat. It demonstrates that after peer teaching, eighth graders understood specific ways to deal with someone they might have a problem with in a group chat. Students also knew more about specific terms after near peer teaching. As shown by the figure, more students were able to ident correctly identify the definition of tone, bystander, upstander, and group polarization. Most interestingly, all students correctly defined upstander and knew more about upstander behaviors in the post survey. In addition, in our open ended question in our post test survey that asked for something new that the eighth graders had learned, four students specifically wrote about being an upstander. One student described, I learned that being an upstander is better than just staying out of it. Ultimately, the eighth grade students also responded positively to peer teaching. Feedback and open-ended responses included things like, 
I liked how there was an example of somebody cyberbullying on a group chat. This helped us better understand when people are being cyberbullied. I've always been told to try to avoid miscommunication in these ways. However, it was really nice to see it all laid out in one place. I liked how they used examples that looked like they were actually texting. For question three, could engagement in YPAR improve high school students' knowledge of research methods, thinking about their own digital communication, and perceptions of themselves as change agents or resources for their school? We found that after participating in the YPAR project, the high school students reported increases in their knowledge and interest in research, with half of the students indicating more interest in specifically texting and media research. One student reported that they had learned about pre-post surveys, how to get answers from people during presentations. Another had commented that it was helpful to learn how to interview students or subjects to collect data. Teens also reported more understanding of group digital communication, such as ways to avoid miscommunication. There was an increase in understanding of things not to do in group chats from 73% to 100%. And in the post-test, students generated nine categories of behaviors to avoid, which included bullying, sending appropriate thing, inappropriate things, abusing power dynamics, sharing images without consent, sending private information, causing drama, not considering other people's feelings, and being rude, which was five more than they had listed in the pretest. Finally, students reported feeling that they could be an agent of change. 53% saw themselves as a resource for others, and 67% learned that they can impact others or even their school community. When asked to share what they liked about the project, students reported that they liked presenting their work for the eighth graders and just how they all work together. Being close in age with the eighth grade students allowed my peers and I to connect with the students on a more personal level. I enjoyed getting to think back to my own experiences and use them while presenting our own work to the different eighth grade classes. So overall, the small and brief yet successful intervention provides evidence for the utility of engaging youth in learning healthy ways to interact with media. We found that positioning youth as experts in digital citizenship education and utilizing them as resources for their younger peers was valuable for both the younger learners and even the older adult teachers. Our YPAR approach demonstrated benefits to our high school partners. Previous research has found that increased agency and leadership are frequent outcomes for youth that are involved in YPAR. And our high school partners reported similar benefits, along with learning how to think like researchers. I have found that having discussions about group chats and digital communication is vital for our generation. And it should be highlighted in more schools rather than leading students to learn these skills outside of the classroom through friends or siblings. Extant media education is largely adults driven and developed rather than acknowledging the experience and expertise of near peers and identifying problems and their solutions. Research has shown that they're not as effective due to the potential mismatch in the youth experiences. However, it is notable that the issues that the high school students identified were similar as the eighth graders and what they reported in their post-test survey. This suggests that youth teachers may be more accurate than adults in identifying salient issues and providing more on-target guidance. Studies of near peer mentoring find that mentees see their mentors as more relatable than adults, even perceiving their competence to be similar. Most importantly, our project encouraged all participants to think more critically about their personal media use and reflect on their experiences. Our findings demonstrate that youth design interventions have the potential to support learning for both the youth teachers and learners. Importantly, in the rapidly evolving landscape of youth and media, interventions designed by those still in adolescence may be especially timely and effective. Near peer mentorship should be considered in digital citizenship education. It is clear that both parties involved, those creating the interventions and those receiving them, can benefit from the experience. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it.